Welcome to your ultimate beginner's guide to creating custom shaders in Unreal Engine 5. If you're new to shaders, don't worry, I'll guide you through each step at a comfortable pace. And if you've never been here before, hi, I'm Digvijay C. Gohil and it's a pleasure to meet you. Alright, get ready to start your awesome shader journey. First of all, what is a shader? In a most basic sense, shader is a program or set of instructions that runs on the graphics processing unit and the output of that will ultimately decide the final color of the pixel on your screen. In Unreal, shaders mostly have two stages or pipeline, vertex shader and pixel shader. Let me take one example to clarify things. Let's say I have a quad, it will have four vertices. CPU will take all these vertices and pass it to our shader's vertex stage. Vertex shader then convert these vertices into screen space vectors then it will decide the shape of our mesh on the screen. Based on that, it will determine how many pixels it will cover on the screen. Normals, UEs, tangents, etc. will also be calculated in the vertex shader. Then all of this data will be passed on the pixel shader. Pixel shader then ultimately decides what color to output on the screen for all these pixels based on the instructions. Okay, simple enough. Now one important thing to remember is, all the instructions in vertex shader will execute for each vertex of the mesh. Similarly, all the instructions in the pixel shader will execute for each pixel occupied by our mesh. Now obviously this is only the overview. Shaders are a very broad topic behind the scenes. Alright, now let's create our first shader in Unreal. Alright, I have created an empty project in Unreal with starter content. I have also set up a basic scene or a level and here I have this flag mesh. I will try to color and deform it to make it look like it is waving in the wind. In the content browser, right click, create new material, give a proper name. This material is the asset that I can apply on my flag mesh. And the material is what holds the shader instructions. Let's double click it. It will open up a new window. I will just dock it beside my viewport. And now we are in the material editor. Here I can zoom in and out using mouse wheel. I can pan around by right click and drag. Then you can see the material preview here. I can also toggle the preview with the primitive shapes. Or you can even preview your custom mesh. For that, open up your content drawer, select the mesh you want to preview and hit this custom mesh button in the preview window. Then here we have a master node or a root node. Here we have all the sockets to control the look of our mesh. You can just hover over each one to know what it does. Then the selected nodes property will be shown in the details panel. Then you have this parameters panel which I will cover in a minute. Then to create a new node, I can right click, search for a node and add it like this. Alternatively, I can open this palette side panel and drag and drop the node from here as well. Now notice that there are some numbers beside the node name. These are shortcut keys or hotkeys. For example, this vector 2 has 2 as a hotkey. So I can just hold 2 on my keyboard and left click here to add that node here. Pretty cool. You can delete the nodes by simply selecting them and hit delete. Okay, I will select the root node. In the details panel, you can see I have lots of options that I can tweak here. And this is one of the reasons beginners might find Unreal a bit overwhelming. Now I cannot cover all of this in a single video so I will just cover the basics here. First you have material domain which basically specifies the type of your shader. Currently it is set to surface means it's for 3D meshes. You can also create shaders for decals, light functions, 3D volumes, post process and UI. Then you have this blend mode to specify the transparency of your shader. Then the shading model specifies the shading mode, whether you want your shader to interact with lights or not, etc. Now the very first thing is my flag mesh is only being rendered from this side. Almost every game engines do this to save the performance. But in this case, I want to render the back face of my flag. So I will just check this two sided option. And now my flag is being rendered from this side as well. Okay, let's try to apply some color to our flag. For that, I have to set some values in this base color socket. 
I will create a vector 3 node by holding the 3 and left click to add the node. Vectors XYZ components will represent RGB channels. I can adjust the values from here. Alternatively, I can adjust the values in the details panel as well. I can also use a color picker here. Then I can see the preview in the node itself. I can hide it as well by clicking on this arrow. This red, green and blue pins represents XYZ components respectively. Or I can take the entire vector value with this white pin. Just left click drag and feed the wire into the base color socket. And the color of the flag changed. Now to delete the connection, simply hover over the wire, hold alt and left click to delete the connection. Alright now instead of a simple color, I want to apply a texture on my flag mesh. So first I will delete this node. Then I want to apply this texture so I can simply drag and drop it into the graph. It will give me a texture sample node with my selected texture. This node samples the texture based on our mesh UVs. Also I have specifically made this texture in a way that it matches the flag mesh aspect ratio to keep things simple for now. I will take this RGB output and feed it into the base color socket. But now let's say I have multiple flags and if I were to apply this material, they all would have the same texture. To have different texture, I could create new materials with new textures, which is not a big deal for a simple shader like this one. But if my shader is more complicated and all I want is to have a different texture, then creating new shaders will become cumbersome. To tackle that issue, Unreal have parameters. Parameters are basically input data that can be tweaked from the details panel. To turn this node into the parameter, simply right click, select convert to parameter. You should give a meaningful name. Now I have this text parameter, which I can also find in this parameters panel. All your shaded parameters can be found in this panel. I can tweak the default texture from here if I want to. Now let's save the shader. In the scene, let's say I have one more flag. Now I want this flag to have a different texture. Instead of making the new material from the scratch, I can select the existing one, right click it and select create material instance. Then you should give a meaningful name. I can double click this instance. It will open up in the new window. Then in the details panel, I can override this text parameter. Save it. Now I can apply this instance material to my new flag. So basically this instance material shares the same shader instructions but you can override certain inputs. I hope you're getting along just fine but at any stage if you're facing any difficulty you can always ask me in the comments. Trust me I have a pretty good track record so far in answering the questions. Now I want to displace my flag to make it look like it is waving in the wind. I can do that by adjusting this world's position offset socket, which is a position offset for all vertices in world space. Let me create a vector 3, set 50 in the X component, and in Unreal, distance units are measured in centimeter, so it will be 50 centimeters in X axis, then feed the output to world position offset socket. Save the shader. In the scene, my flag has moved 50 centimeters in the X axis. One thing to note is, this instruction is running on the pixel shader and this offset instruction is running on the vertex shader. Also pay attention here, this is offset. Meaning if my flag is sitting at 1000 by setting this offset, now the flag will be at 6000 in world space. Now instead of moving the flag, I want to displace it. So I will just delete this vector 3 and create local position node. It will give me position of each vertex in local space. Now if you don't know what is local space or world space, there should be a link on the top right corner of the screen. There I have explained coordinate spaces in much more details. Go watch it and then come back. Ok so for displacement logic. I will use local space so that it would work even if I rotate and position the flag anywhere in my scene. In local space, flag's x axis goes to the right and y axis goes to the front. So as I move to the right, vertices x value will increase. I will use that as sine waves input and set the new values in the y axis to distort my flag. 
One more thing for vertex displacement to work, you need some extra geometry. My flag mesh is not just a quad, it has some extra geometry. Alright, now I will take this local position, which is a vector 3, and split it using split component node. Which as the name suggests, splits the vector as individual components. RGB and XYZ are interchangeable by the way. I will take the X component as input for my sine waves. Sine function basically returns the values between minus 1 and 1. And you can get sine waves if you pass any continuous value as an input. If I multiply the input with some number, I will get steeper waves. So I can basically control the frequency of wave with this. Similarly, I can control the strength or amplitude of the waves if I multiply some number with the output of my sine function. Alright, so I will take the X component and feed it into the multiply node. Now I want to control the frequency from the details panel, so I will create a scalar parameter. Call it frequency, set the default value to 10 and feed it into the multiply node. Then I will take the multiply node and feed it into the sine node. Then take sine node's output and feed it into another multiply node. Now I would also like to control the strength from the details panel, so once again create new scalar parameter, call it strength, give default value of 20 this time, and feed it into the multiply node. Now I have sine waves, I want to use it as y component of the vector, and I want to keep x and z components same as the original. So to combine the individual components back into a vector, I will create a append many node. I will take this multiply and feed it into this G socket or Y component and use the same X and Z so this R into R and B into B. Now you might be thinking that just take this RGB and feed into the wall position offset. But remember that I have emphasized that this is only offset. Here I will have position as well. It may be displaced, but it is still actual position. I only want offset. To get that, I will take this and feed it into subtract node. Then I will take this local position excluding offset and feed it into the subtract node as well. So basically position plus offset minus just position and I will end up with only the offset. Now there is one final catch here. This socket expects offset in world space, my calculation is in local space. So I need to convert it from local space to world space. I can do that with transform vector node. Expand it, set the source to local space, destination world space. Now I can finally feed it into the world position offset. And I have displaced flag, awesome. Now I also want to move it over time. I can move or shift the sine wave by adding some values to my sine input. Like this. So here I will create a time node. It will basically return seconds elapsed since you start the engine. I can multiply some value with it to control the speed. I want to control the speed from the details panel so you guessed it, I will create another scalar parameter. Call it speed and give default value of 0.5. Multiply these two together. Then let me make some room here. Add these two together. And then feed it into the sign node. And now I have moving flag. Now if you're finding the video easy to understand, let me know by hitting that like button. While you are at it, you should also consider subscribing for more interesting videos in the future. Now obviously I have an issue here, my flag is not sticking to the pole. So let's fix it. Now the way I would fix it is using UVs of my mesh. Let me create texture coordinate node. 
it will give me UVs. UVs are vector 2 by the way. My flag UVs has 0, 0 here and 1, 1 here. Let me just quickly show you. And I will use the X component of my UV. So I will take the texture coordinates and feed it into the component mask node. Expand it and uncheck this G. So what this node does is, now it only allows R or X component of the UVs to pass through. In the preview, you can see that I have 0 to the left side and it linearly goes up to 1. I can directly multiply it with this multiply node so that my wave can attenuate at the left side. However, I would like more control, so I will create a smooth step node. Feed this into the value socket. Set the max value to 0 0.5. I have an entire video about smooth step, but just a TLDR. It will return 0 if this value is less than this min. It will return 1 if this value is greater than max and values between min and max will be interpolated using Hermit interpolation. So it will go from 0 to 1 in the left half and the right half will be all 1. Let's multiply these two together. So here my waves will attenuate to the left side of the flag. Finally take this output and feed it into this G. Save and the issue has been successfully resolved. One final thing, I can select all these nodes, right click, collapse nodes and it will be converted to subgraph. I can give a name in the details panel. You can also tweak input output pins. Then I can double click it to move into it. Click this arrow to step back or just click the root. You can also right click expand nodes to get your nodes back. Just an organization tip. Now don't go anywhere yet, patience is a virtue. Ok so you might be thinking what's next after this. I will post a documentation link below, I want you to read it thoroughly. After that I want you to mess around in the material editor yourself. Make yourself familiar with it. In the meantime I'm going to keep a close eye on this video's performance. If you find it helpful, I might cover Unreal tutorials in the future as well. That's it from me and I'll see you in the next one.